And if you want to talk, you can unmute yourself still. But uh, if you forgot to unmute yourself, I have to mute all. I think that's how it works. Okay, we are on YouTube live. I'm gonna record this for those who cannot take the live class. I know there's some conflict schedule there. Um, okay, let me mute. So don't forget recording. I'm gonna ping myself so that recording should keep on myself. Okay, but I do want to see your faces. That's a dilemma. If I ping myself. Okay. Hello, everyone. And really welcome back to our landscape class, lesson five. Um, historically, we're going, we're getting into the Southern Song dynasties. Uh, there's two, uh, two uh, parts of Sun Dynasty. Southern uh, is the later part. It lasted two centuries, actually, quite a long time after the north of uh, China was taken by the Normans, the Georgian, and then the, uh, the Mongols eventually overthrown the uh, Chinese. Uh, dynasty in the end of Southern Song. This period is very important artistically. Um, and uh, there are many masters which are my, uh, who are my favorite, like Ma Yuan, Xia Gui, uh, Li Tang, we learned last class also belongs to uh, the southern, early uh, part of the Southern Song Dynasty. Ma Yuan and Xia Gui are the um, big names in Japan because uh, Japanese art, if there's any difference, because they, they honor uh, Southern Dynasty masters more than any other uh, period. So uh, very influential in Japan. And the Zen art is uh, also inspired by them. Um, let me take, start to take uh, some slides show maybe. Okay, this is the, uh, the slide, uh, the page we're going to, to paint. Uh, but before that, I want to show some real paintings. Uh, so we're not going to paint this uh, like a black and white uh, woodblock print, right? That's the advantages of today's uh, student. You can learn from directly from the, the masters. Um, here's some other, okay. This page actually is uh, uh, also Mayan style. Uh, the first one was Mayan, but these are all um, copies of Mayan, or you know, uh, in in the style of Mayan uh, by this uh, master seat garden menu editor. Uh, this Li Chen, Li Chen is a, uh, a northern zone master. He started painting uh, a theme called the double pines in uh, Flat Vista, um, if you recall, Li Chen. Uh, and uh, this is uh, Li Tang, you know, the master we learned last time, the x cut. Um, as you can see, they, they start to make a, uh, just, a, you know, the, the head, uh, the top of the mountain or um, bottom of the mountain into a small uh, scape, not, not uh, a small scale painting, not, not a, a monumental painting, like a two meters, uh, or, I mean, yeah, almost two meters long last time, right? This, this is uh, only a hand uh, fan. And this is the, the, his uh, large painting, Li Tang. Um, we go through this, we have learned this one. This is in Southern Song. Details. Uh, this okay. Ma Yuan. What's the difference between Ma Yuan and Li Tang? Um, he he paint his painting known as the uh, one corner landscape. If you draw a, <coughs> a diagonal line from uh, upper right to lower left, 
you'll see the upper half is unpainted. Um, it suggested, you know, the distance, uh, it left uh, blank. But it's in your imagination, right? You can, you can feel the, uh, we call this the uh, pregnant void, unpainted um, void part, but it has uh, things in there. So um, one corner composition is his, his uh, invention. Details, uh, you can see the angular uh, branches of uh, pine. Pine occupies the main role in his painting. Uh, there are many ways doing that. Um, it could be dotted like this. Um, yeah, this is another, I, I got the screenshot from uh, Professor, the late professor, professor uh, James Cahill's lecture. If, if you have seen that, uh, you have saw, you know, th this is from his lecture slides. He's got lots of uh, detailed, uh, I mean, uh, Mayan's uh, one corner landscape, uh, you know, with focus on the bottom of um, uh, a rock, maybe uh, the waterfall. Um, or with pines. And this is plum, but uh, with his trademark um, branches, which is uh, uh, jacked and uh, with hanging branches, even you know, on the plum. plum. You see this hanging down um, with, with angular uh, turns. I think I, I disagree with the, uh, Professor Cahill's view that uh, if the branch is angular, it's not authentic. I think his, his painting, is, if it's authentic, it should be angular, like this. Yeah, see that? It's a corner of a, uh, a pond. This time, it's the upper side is painted, and the lower side is, is water with duck. Spring view, and this was the literati painting. You may uh, I mentioned last time the amateur scholar, amateur painters, literati no uh, the because they are leather men, uh, the educated high of rank officials. Um, they are calligrapher pen, uh, and a poet. Uh, Zhao Zhang is a uh, Zhao Zhao Mengfu is a uh, um, leading. Um, Artist, he he's uh, a lawyer, lawyer family of the the eleventh uh, grandson of the northern Song dynasty, also the uh, relative of uh, the southern Song, and he lived through Yuan dynasty. Oh, see, he served in the Yuan Yuan dynasty court, the Mongol Yuan dynasty, uh, but he carries the the heritage of the Song uh, literary paintings. And uh, this is a little different than Ma Yuan because Ma Yuan is more academic. Uh, it, it's, it's basically gombi painting, if you will. It, you must do a draft or, or um, uh, sketch or under painting, you know, put under the silk. These are all painted on silk, mostly, yeah, silk painting. Um, but you can see literati painting um, use paper and more spontaneous. And they don't um, emphasize on the method or the rules and uh, more emphasize on the E or the idea. You know, they call the painting write, writing of ideas, right? idea writing, uh, expressive ex expression of their, um, uh, their mood or something. Um, and you can see the, the rocks are very um, calligraphic. Also the, the trunk uh, of tree and the branches and the details of uh, this. And you can, uh, let me show you my copy of this painting. I did numerous uh, studies uh, um, before the class. Several versions here. I tried to you know, um, copy the mind, not the traces of the master, because you cannot really copy someone's uh, signature, right? 
So this this kind of painting is like signature, but we do have. Uh, but you can see the influence of academic uh, rules still uh, exist. You know, you have to uh, learn the rules, then uh, be more expressive like this. So we're going to start with uh, the uh, elements of the painting Heim. Uh, this is the detail of the rock we have learned earlier last uh, last classes, um, and this is the de uh, detail of the. See. of that uh, um, double pine seam, uh, double pine with uh, with rock is a seam. No cause. Okay, um, you can see a detail of the rock, very calligraphic. Um, these are we call it, you know scholar amateur style, not not uh, uh, not as uh, neat as those uh, you know academic painters. They don't probably draft uh, the painting. Uh, this is a Western <laughs> explanation of the rock I, I got from other class. Okay, this is Ma Yuan's uh, fan face, Ma Yuan. Uh, you see, this is a close-up view of uh, a landscape. With a, he, he always does a, uh, a poet. So his painting is known also as poetic, land, uh, poetic landscape uh, by um, scholars like uh, James Cahill. Um, you can see the, even the, the Han is not complete, but with his trademark hanging branches, The root is very exaggerated here. Um, I want to show you the detail of the, uh, the, the branch and uh, the needles before we paint it. You know, just get an impression, not start copying yet, but you can see uh, they are basically um, patternized. Pattern Each group is uh, you know, relatively the same size and shape. There's some variations like uh, in, in tonality and some angle, some different perspective, maybe um, some, you know, only half, maybe some hit uh, overlapping. That's very important. Uh, I'll show you all the rules. Um, but each painting of his uh, different, you know, um, I think probably he doesn't have uh, the rules I, I'm going to talk about, but uh, for study purpose, you better to learn. And this is the detail of the trunk with bark. Um, notice the ac academic painter painted the uh, trunk with a smooth side on the outer uh, side of the contour. It could be rough inside, but with the scholar amateur style, they could be um, downy, right? Uh, fluffy on both sides of a line. That's a different, I think. So they, they, their painting uh, appears neat because the smoothness on the contour, at least the outside of the contour, uh, detail of the branches, a ball of uh, pine. Okay, uh, some other parts of the painting dotted. Okay, here, here's the um, page where we, 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 we can start. Uh, doing some uh, pine needles. But in painting, actually the trunk comes first. Um, let me see, which way? Yeah, the, the, uh, the trunk should, should come first. So we do a little bit trunk and then we, 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 we do the uh, needles. <clears throat> um, I'm going to open a new brush. It's uh, the whisker landscape. Uh, you used to call it rat whisker. Landscape. That's the traditional category name for this kind of stiff hair brush. Um, it's actually a blend of a uh, visual uh, and then um, and then artificial hair. I think. Okay, you can just squeeze it open without a soak. This this is because uh, the it's unglued. I I just taped it back. It's a brand new brush, actually, so I just use it. 
And then um, we've got uh, this here. Oh, you, you don't see my screens, I'm sorry. Okay, I just opened a new brush, which is the Red Whisker Landscape Brush. Red Whisker Landscape Brush is among the uh, uh, five basics. If you, you can also order individually. Uh, you can also use the basic, uh, uh, basic wolf, basic wolf, or uh, use this for the needles, uh, the basic, uh, small, small basic uh, brush called the leaf wing brush. Leaf. You can also use the tiny little brush for little uh, fine. And if you paint small, you know, uh, you can also use uh, the seven dwarf three sheep brush or um, red hair, uh, red bean, that kind of uh, liner, gombi liner for fine line. Um, or you can use uh, any stiff brush like uh, we used before, the uh, uh, small uh, whistle brush or um, orchid bamboo brush. Okay. I'll, I'll use a little bit ink diluted with water because we want to save the darkest for the needles. I, I'll use medium to dark, medium to dark. So you can use a piece of paper, test it. You should always use a, uh, some, some paper when you painted pine because you want to dry the brush. You want to dry the brush before you do it. Okay. Yeah. It, you know, in the beginning it's too wet. You see, I got dry stroke. Okay. Okay. We usually start from the middle of the, uh, the tree. Uh, you can start from where the first um, branch start. That's a good point to start. Or in this case, you can start from where the branch, hanging branch crossing the trunk. Um, let, let's, let's don't do the, fur, uh, the, the whole thing yet. We just practice some strokes, okay? So uh, I'll do something big so you can see. Um, let me, let me, um, we're, we're going to rest the paper. So if you, uh, are, you if you use something uh, like a scrapping, uh, you know, like a, any, any practice paper will be fine. So basically um, as we write calligraphy, you know, uh, let me just write the character for, for this pine. And we have um, tip concealed stroke and tip exposed stroke. This is the standard. And you can see lifting, pressing, that kind of thing. This all uh, has to do with uh, the skill you're going to apply. Because when you paint um, the uh, trunk, it's more like writing some part of the smooth part is like writing uh, the, the uh, vertical or horizontal strokes. And the, you know, some part you use uh, um, the side of the brush. Uh, if we write in running style, you, you will see this kind of pressing, lifting, pull, uh, push and pull, this, that kind of movement. So I want to, um, I, ask you to follow my, uh, my uh, steps here. Um, the, so first press, don't leave the brush uh, uh, away from the, uh, from the paper, just, and the lift. So you got something like the, a dot, right? And then you, you, you pull and press and make a, a, a folding stroke and then Okay, this time, press, lift, 
press, lift, press, several times, and then um, change directions. You can make a curve or, or bend or, or fold, you know. So just, just feel the brush until the, the, the brush exhausted. You know, you, you can make a several lift and, and the press along the line. You know, try to keep one side relatively smooth. The other uh, is a coarse, rough, and try to make some uh, jagged uh, turn and uh, angle turn, what do you call that? Folding, right? And then just use the center of the brush to exhaust it. So if you could do a stroke, something like that, it will help later when you um, try to paint the contour of the north um, pine. So at this point, we just do the abstraction. Don't worry about what is um, resembling. It's a calligraphy practice, okay? Just try one more time. Push, I mean, um, press, lift, press, lift. Okay, and then make a curved turn and press the other way. And you can just be creative. And try to adjust the brush, try to make a friend um, with, with your brush. We call this hesitation stops or uh, pauses, right? So th these are very, um, th this kind of, um, this kind of um, pauses or hesitation uh, can generate the kind of um, not for the for the you know later we we just put a, a, a knot knot hole knob hole right knot hole not not the 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 bark where uh, where the branch broke and it keep growing and it got a hole something like that um, that's that's another stroke you know just like a extended uh, 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 hook or or dot of the calligraphy. Um, that kind of, you can go up, you know, some part is the, the beginning is hidden. The, the tip exposed and tip hidden. Actually, um, a lot of people practice calligraphy have trouble with the dot. The dot has a beginning and ending itself. It not, not just uh, like that. Uh, it, it, it has this, every stroke actually begins with this, 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 this dot. So dot is uh, very useful, right? Ending with a dot. Uh, in, in, in the pine, we need to combine all the um, opposite elements like a straight and a curve, uh, narrow and the same and uh, uh, press and the lift, all that. So, but we don't really do the extreme like the practice, but this uh, exaggerated practice will, will help later when you try to, sometimes, you know, you, you make a kind of flip, you have to twist the brush to change uh, side. So this kind of line will help you. So try to control the, the tip, the direction of the tip. Yeah, that's a basic practice uh, for, for the pine um, trunk. So let's, uh, let's do a, oops, I got two pages here, that's good. Um, let's, let's just do some more um, basic stroke drill before we do anything. Um, 
I think this will be really helpful. Another type of the stroke we're going to use is the pine needles, of course. Um, okay, I, I just use this. See, this dots actually help um, this, this uh, stains on the paper. I saw this uh, sized paper. This is semi size. It's still absorbent, but not smeared that much. Okay, so <clears throat> let me do a big, big one. So we we probably would you can see the proportion on the on the sample painting. It's not so big, but uh, uh, in flower flowers and birds painting, it's like that. So each stroke. Okay, let me just do it, and then we'll we'll. I will show you the trick, okay. So first the thing is you do it from, uh, um, it's hard to give you a, okay, let's, let's make sections. So for this part, if this is a fan, right? For, for this part, from the center to the, the right, you do it from uh, outside in, outside in, okay, like that. And then from here, you do it from inside out, one, two, three. So this may be nine to, um, nine to 10 or maybe 12, something like that. This will be uh, three. So the last three is uh, um, from, from uh, inside out. And this is outside in. And uh, you can then add three strokes from outside in at the bottom. So we, we, because we, we try to start not from uh, the heavy stroke because when you when you paint the beginning is is uh, uh, more solid and you want this this bottom group a little soft so that's why I, I start from here from the left side then the center the right and then make a U I'm sorry not U turn V. So you can you don't have to lift the brush and then just finish this part. So this one is a V right here. In and out, in and out. Um, and then add three to finish. You can complete this um, into a what we call the chrysanthemum pattern. Um, you can see that in the in the uh, here. I think, oops, this, the, uh, actually, this is not very clear. I wish you can see this one, maybe it's a chrysanthemum, uh, this one, it doesn't have that, but uh, uh, it's more rounded. And uh, some of them are just a half, fan, like a, you know, not rounded fan, just a regular fan, folding fan. This is more like a corn. Anyway, so th there are different shapes. Let, let me just show you some variations. But uh, um, you, you need to keep, you know, using one pattern only, not mix of a uh, round and half circles, you know, that kind of, so, And you, you may notice that you can put a um, pearl head, like a pearl head pin or um, teardrop, teardrop head. So it's a little rounded. Um, some, some call it uh, nail head. You can also do, a, you know, like a more squarish in the, in the beginning. Let me do a bigger one. So this is nail head. 
like that is squarish. This is. Henry, like we that. can't see your paper. Oh, sure. Um, I forgot. All right, let me repeat this. <clears throat> Nail head or tear drop. Um, nail head teardrop, or you can um, you can do just a little bit. The point is, you know, you want to have a clear start, not not just the like that. I think that's very common. A lot of students maybe do that. You just print with the brush. That, that, that's a, probably contemporary art artists would buy that, but uh, not the traditional style. Okay. So this is too heavy. Uh, you need to lift the brush. You can use a, um, let me use a, Niner. If you have a, a brush that comes with a sharp tip, a needle sharp tip, it will help. Because shoot, this is a large seven wolf brush, seven wolf three uh, sheep brush. They're smaller ones too. Okay, um, so you can with this kind of thin brush. You see, my starting is a, a little you know the, this kind of pin? You pin the, the flowers to your, to your suit. That's kind of a nail. It's not the nail like, a, like this, OK? So this, this nail is wrong. This is OK. Round, a little bit round or squarish, this kind of nail head. And remember to change directions so you don't have to, you know, to do this kind of awkward uh, thing. You just, uh, this is. Another kind of stroke, actually, we call tear teardrop. Teardrop could be in the beginning or the ending. You just snap back, snap, snap, snap up at the end. Just uh, stop a little bit. You'll get that kind of. Uh, so you start with a lower, I mean, lighter pressure and press, press down to get that teardrop. You, you know, some artists maybe pull the brush, lift it, when you lift the brush, the, the tip of the brush goes uh, the last to, at the end. Maybe that, that, yeah, if you want to make it uh, smooth. If you just lift it, it will be too rough here, right? If, if, you, if you lift the brush gradually, you press down and then you lift the brush with the tip feeling that rough end. You get that teardrop and you see, I start from the, uh, the light and then press and then lift. So that's, a, that's just for this corner. So if you, if you draw a diagram, let me do this for you again. So this area is all um, from from the outside in, and the, this section we call we just call this uh, this one area, and this is a number two area. You do it uh, from uh, inside out, right? This is called teardrop stroke. 
like this. Just, just pull, pull. This is a, I don't know what's the, it's up uh, from top down. I think it's a, not, this will be pouring, pouring, yeah, pouring. This is not pushing though. It's just like that. And then you add three at the bottom. This is also from outside in. And they all end in the imaginative center, or actually you can start, uh, you, can, you can have all the, the branches stop, even you know, have little paths there. So it, it forms a, a solid center, but not to the extent like this. Um, And uh, if necessary, you can you can add um, more to fill in um, the gap, okay? But basically, um, you should do it uh, in, in one uh, sequence because uh, it's hard to make up. If you keep make up, it will be uh, something like this. Uh, so it. it it may lose the uh, continuation of uh, chi and uh, uh, not focused, right? So just the, uh, you know, the skilled artist like Bada Sanren may, may do this, something like that. But, uh, you know, the rule is still there in, in the imagination uh, center. But uh, in the beginning, we should always do this. That's for just the one cluster. So let's now talk about um, grouping or overlapping them. Okay. So group uh, three, maybe if two or three first. So if this is the first group, right? You don't have to draw this. I, I just uh, use this uh, uh, formula. <clears throat> so if you, if you draw a imaginative uh, center line of the fan, and then you divide it into um, half, you, you make this, uh, uh, you find this spot, this is where we start uh, the second group. That's about this, the, this, the overlapping, it's about half. Um, so if, if you draw another, we, we just do a half circle, it's easier. And then do another. You, you, you see this line? It's a diagonal line. That means it, it, it steps up. Instead of, instead of going horizontal, you overlap on top, slightly on top. Let me do the actual painting here. So we start from this horizontal position. The V, one, two, three, one, two. You can, you can, uh, just depends on the, you can even, you know, make it more, but uh, it's optional, but you have to keep consistency as, a, as long as you do that. If we do that first, then the, the, all the rest will be this. So the, my second one is right here, right? About, about here, so, and just do from, Okay. 
Okay. And then another, we know that is here. Oops, I should go from top first. You can paint slower because uh, I try to just illustrate. I don't really concern with line quality at this point. So you can see this center dots not on the same level. If you if you uh, make a mistake, on that it will be. I don't say this is absolutely not going to happen, but if you paint only in this way, um, you cannot really make the shape that's something like a, a cloud, on, you know, like a crown on, on the pine. So you, everything will be horizontal. This is more, um, more organic and uh, uh, natural, I think, if you, if you do this. So not this. This will be something like that. And this is what we want. Okay. And you can you can also do other shapes like a half fan, like we this is more comma actually. But the southern Song dynasties, they are um, more uh, you can also do it on the left side to see. They don't hint the, the half. They probably would do the, the, the four of the at least three quarter maybe. Okay, this this is another. Uh, you can then add another row under it, and you can overlap with the previous one. But you know you always do it uh, in clusters. Uh, in basic unit, uh, when you when you add something, you don't just add one one uh, one or two. You add a, another cluster to make it dance. You can use uh, different tones. You can start from light and then add dark, preferably, or you can also do the dark first and then add light. Um, not very in between. This three, maybe you can add another layer, maybe you know, with light, maybe on top. Just remember not to paint exactly the same uh, at the same center when you add. You know, I now I I I violated the rule when you combine uh, this when I combine this two. First of all, the size are different. See, big and small. You cannot paint the same tree with different size and different pattern, because this is like a like this pattern, and this is more like a, a round. Okay. Let me see how uh, you're doing, and if you have any questions, let me. Any any questions so far? Okay, if not, I'm going to continue. Um, continue with the uh, branches. These are very important uh, um, elements. Okay, uh, we talked about the, the trunk stroke. Now let's do a trunk. Um, we, we still just do the, the practice. In the end, we'll, we'll do the painting. But uh, let's first start. Uh, let's do this left side. 
remember we 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 have this kind of frequent stops. Um, you should have a general idea. Like uh, you can start with a little drawing of uh, uh, what you're going to do, just like a, like this, something like that. So you can you can use uh, just black. So this is the crown. This is the the branch. It's going to be a C shape, right? And then you just do the C, but uh, kind of make it uh, uh, more or less uh, varied. And you can start to, um, let me see. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do the trunk yet. So let me just start here with a, a branch like that. This, this is like in and out. This one goes up and this one goes down. So this is about half of the, the, the place. You can also start from, you know, right from here, the, where the, the trunk split. And then uh, you can make some knot, knotted line and some smooth. But, you know, you don't want to make both sides uh, round or square, you know, that, that would be. So you keep the diagonal, the, 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 what is called the, diameter uh, about the same, the thickness of the trunk about the same, okay? And now I'm doing the, the root part. You can, you can have some, uh, don't make the root um, over uh, exaggerated. This is already too big, maybe. Um, and you, you know, you don't want to make the root too complicated in the beginning, like that. That would be too much for a small tree. Um, you see the master do that, but uh, at this point, we, we try not to uh, elaborate, exaggerate that. Okay, just keep it simple. Um, you can just do one, maybe, you know, just do one little hole, it would be fine. Okay, um, then after that, you can dot the, sometimes I have planned, you know, where the, um, the knot hole is, so I have a little swearing, a little bumpy um, contour. Uh, sometimes I just uh, add them randomly. So see that that just comes natural. But if you if you um, let me make some mistakes here. Try to avoid the. Uh, This kind of uh, knot holes just in the right in the middle, or you, uh, you know, it should be here, but not, not touch the contour. So this is a no no. Okay, if you put the knot hole right on the line, it's wrong, or right in the middle, it's wrong. Some this is this is the only place I will do that. Okay. And uh, um, after the trunk, we'll do branches. Um, somebody would think, it may ask, what about the scale, the, the bark? Uh, we could do that, but uh, it depends. You know, sometimes uh, if I feel the brush is right, like uh, in the correct. Uh, dryness, I'll do that. But uh, I don't wash the brush and do the bark right away because I meant to do the branches with the dark, uh, uh, medium dark ink. But since I got the, the light, you can see uh, I use dry, dry and uh, uh, light ink to do the, the bark or the scale, we call it like a fish scale. 
Um, this is a little tricky here. Um, you don't want to draw the, the uh, scale like, a, like this, like a, like a fish eggs. Okay, this is don't. <clears throat> or uh, you make lots of them like a squeezed like that, too dense. That's wrong. What you do is dry light, lighter than the contour and hold the brush at the slant. You can use the uh, paper towel or, or um, piece of uh, wasted paper to dry the brush, just making sure it's dry. And then you do it like this, maybe uh, half or quarter circle oval and something in between the oval and the, and the round or square even, you know, the rectangular. You can do this way or this way. The circle goes this side or goes that side. And you can do eight. I don't know. Uh, yeah, just eight or, or nine or six, something like that. Um, and then you can make up. You just draw some, some numbers <laughs> and then zeros, of course. Um, little angles, if you will, or half circles. Dry brush, see that that's that's the way to do it. And try to put on the inside uh, and leave some uh, white around the knot, the knot hole. No, no scares here. Okay, only um, on the side, but uh, you don't you don't want to do something like this. So you do left and right and leave the center, leave, leave the center with highlight. You want to make the line uh, kind of travel. Okay, this is, uh, this is wrong. The right way to do that, even you know, I have this, this chunk is straight, right? I will do, I will make it look like, uh, you see, So this, this white area, unpainted white, white area goes to the le uh, right and then turns back. You don't have to make it you know, all uh, clear, but uh, if you just avoid the center, straight in the right in the center. So the void goes like an S, to create some more, um, some more interest like twist. You understand? <clears throat> Use dry brush, not, uh, not this rounded or um, too small or too dense. It's not good, very loose, loosely. And you can use light and dark, you know, something like that, or you can if you if you have a sense of uh, um, shadow, you may do it uh, cons in consistency. But uh, in Chinese uh, painting, we don't really have the light sort uh, source of light, direction of light. You may if, if you if you are um, familiar with that, you can keep you know the, the maybe just on the left side or the right side to to make kind of sh um, more pop, you know. Anyway, that's not a very important uh, point, but uh, just an idea. That's the scales or the bark and the, the hole. Uh, okay, I think, uh, okay, one more thing before, before we go to the whole painting. It's the branches. Before we add the needles, we need to make twigs. Branches and twigs. Okay, let's do branches first. And let me put uh, some 
taboo <laughs> first, don'ts, don'ts, okay. The don'ts. Uh, don't do chicken feet. What that means is, uh, let me see, you have a branch, then you start to split. See, this is a chicken feet already. And uh, to get worse, you do another chicken feet. So everything else is, is okay. You know, your stroke would be fine. Your, your, um, just the composition. So avoid chicken feet, all right? Um, try to, try to paint the, um, the branch like this. I would do the branch in the front. So they are not always behind. So there are four directions of branch in Chinese uh, painting theory. So this one, see this in front of the, the trunk. The trunk goes behind, behind. Let me, let me use this, uh, this new brush. I forgot to use this. I'm supposed to show you the landscape brush. I just opened whisker landscape brush. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I did this a little too thin, so I can maybe add a little to adjust it. This is just my way to save it. And I use scales. So and you can you can use dots to adjust. If it is too smooth, you can use mass dots to adjust the the size. So and you can use um, just the some dots on the on the branch indicate the uh, bark, not circles. Okay. On the little branch, you don't have to do the circles. Well, you can do a little bit, just not not to make a effort on that. Okay, so um, you can draw something on this direction, from, from this direction. Let's, let's do that. So, That's, uh, that's how to do the branch. I usually uh, just leave a, um, a space and then come back to do the branch. I, 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 I try to, to keep a continuity of this main uh, trunk first, but it's up to you. Uh, if you have a plan, then you should uh, uh, you, you can do it either way. You can finish this branch and then continue on top. Okay, here, here's another very important uh, point I try to make. It's here. Um, I think this. Henry? Yeah. I need, Henry, can you move your paper? Okay. Yeah, let me do this here. <clears throat> I need to uh, show you this detail. How do you make a branch into twigs? Okay. Let's say this is the, the branch. Um, never mind where it comes. And we outline it, right? This is the branch. And then in the end, you want to uh, turn into a, um, a twig, getting just a one stroke, not outlined. <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I would leave a little openness here. Instead of doing this, this is a this is a bad example. So you don't, you don't, especially let me exaggerate. Don't do this and do this. Okay, you can do. Let's say we, we want to turn into um, twigs from here. So 
I'll leave a space and, and I put a, a dot there. Okay. And this is the, the, the thin branch or the uh, twigs. Let's say if you want to uh, start, so just start the, the uh, next uh, twig with a dot also helps. So that, so there's a, I just emphasize here. So you start not like a, like a too, too uh, smooth. This is, this is no, no stuff there. And also, you know, you put your stuff here. Sorry, question. If your branch is horizontal, how would you add leaves in the diagonal shape? Okay, good question. Um, yeah, the, the, the uh, pine, pine um, crown, uh, it, it's really like, like a hovering cloud. And the, the branch is under it. You should not um, cover the whole um, branch, right? It's a, a little bit above. That's, but in um, uh, your your question is like, uh, okay, this is how I will organize it. So th this is the. the pine needles, pine leaves will come, it's, it's like this. So instead of horizontal, I, I do it uh, more like this. You understand? So if I do one, we can do it round, it, it will go up. So that that um, that goes diagonal, right? <clears throat> the <clears throat> the uh, so no question about this uh, branch to twigs. Okay, now let's do the uh, complete um, tree. When we do any painting, uh, there's a composition um, issue of a co uh, composition phase. Uh, you need to uh, have a general idea, you know, where the, the tree stands. So you can draw a thumbnail, uh, just a stick figure of the tree. Uh, I have this tree in front of me, so I'm going to just just let me let my mind um, get clear where it, it is. So normally we should avoid the center line, you know, the, the center. I would draw just the position of the trunk and the, the crown roughly is here. I, I don't have to draw all the zigzags, you know, you could be, it could be as simple as, uh, as that. Okay. And then uh, maybe just a general idea of uh, the main branches, I, I can just use the side of brush to block in the tree um, crown, the shape of the, you don't have to draw all these little tweaks, but uh, just the placement of the, uh, the leaf, the profile, the silhouette, 
uh, as we do in Western painting, they call it uh, um, value study. Uh, actually, there's a Japanese term for this. It's called no ten, means uh, uh, black and white. Black and white. Okay. Um, so you, yeah, it just like a black and white. Just ignore all the details. Just draw the uh, general idea. Something like that. If you if you could do this first, um, you can even do the life size uh, drawing. It it could be your your uh, draft sketch. You can put underneath it. If if I do this, I just put under it. It it will help like that. Let's do that. I think yeah, because a lot of people are beginners. And you have difficulty to um, put the tree uh, right in the in a good place uh, on your paper, right? So let me just show you what I would do. I'll just draw my uh, composition. Yeah, you can use a pencil. Start with use pencil. Um, I still, you know, I give myself freedom of uh, uh, painting, so I don't really do, I just position it. I just position the height of these chunks and just block, blotting in the, I, I, do, I do plan the negative shapes of the, negative shape of the branches, you know, something like that. In, in, in this uh, pencil drawing, then I'll use ink to uh, just control points, you know, where the um, knuckles is, you know, the knots, the, the knots is. If you draw more detail, it's like gonna be, it's fine, you know, like a fine line, they always have this, uh, um, white painting to start with, we call it like a just pure drawing, pure, uh, pure drawing, pure, how do you say, sketch. This is gesture drawing in, in maybe in, uh, in uh, drawing class, right? Gesture drawing. You can use a big brush, not, not, uh, small brush just to control the uh, composition a little bit, yes. Okay, I'll just do something free. You know, this is this is time you can be very creative and uh, you can use the scissors to, to edit, you know. So this, you can use any tool you print out uh, it's basically, you, you need to you need to develop your own master copy, so you can keep practicing on on this uh, according to this composition. Later, you don't have to do this every time. And notice the uh, characteristic uh, jack, jacked or angular. Uh, Angular turns. Oops, I think I, I should have more space there, but I would. I don't. You don't have to. So now you become. You know, if I solve all the problem uh, and it, it's it, you know makes it different from the copy, change ten percent. <laughs> I I I can uh, claim the the copyright. <laughs> it's just the. Uh, process, you change, you make changes also. Okay, so this is a, uh, I just use blobs, 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 right? to, to um, show the, the general shape of the, um, the tree and uh, 
a, a gesture of the tree. You know, this is how I do the my sketch. Did you watch the uh, video uh, I did on stretch in 10 minutes? This this one? Because I didn't have time to do all the leaders. I wish I had time in the sunshine. In this kind of, I, I did find a shade, but it's kind of warm, uh, 18, 90 degrees these days. So th this is what uh, I, I, I did for my uh, field study also. And then uh, now we do studio painting, right? We just put this under it. I can still twist it. I want to make a little room to the right. I can still do that. Um, so I have a little room more for this. So you can change a little bit. I, <clears throat> you don't have to. Um, because if I don't worry about staying the, the end of painting, I, I don't have to do another tracing. You know, I can use a charcoal or pencil to, to draw this, but let me just do it. Okay. So we use medium dark, too dark uh, to do the branches, the trunk. It should be dark, pretty dark than the uh, the bark, you know. So it should be, but not not solid as the. So I, I'll start from here, which is the middle point of uh, my tree. I I noticed I I mine. This this one is kind of like in the middle, right? Cut in the middle. So that's not good. Let me move down a little bit. And I have to adjust the top, I know that. The top may be too big. Anyway, so I, I still make changes. Just in my reference, I start to correct my initial joint. So this one is roughly about uh, above the middle line you know, on the upper side of this. So let me just dot that, that um, what do you call this, nut hole, and then don't lift to the brush, just keep going and adjust. You can hes hesitate because this is the semi-size shrine. It's not going to smear, but it's, it will smear though. If you um, do it too slow, I have both sides rough. It's, it's fine. And uh, you, can, you can use your arm, use your, you can stand even, you know, if you paint like this big, um, just, try to do it in, in one stroke. So you will start from dark, uh, dark and wet into uh, dry. Okay. And then the second one, I, I, I looked for those uh, knuck, knuckle point or the nut point to make stops. So, Okay, so but don't make it equal. So it should have some rhythm. So there are two of them here on this side. Let me start from. See my my lines start to. Um, it's okay to have some shaking hand. Some uh, even you have some lost and found. It's good. I think. Um, some swearing. Some. Narrowing, but relatively keep the the line same. Uh, I mean the diagonal diameter same. So there's no uh, sudden change in the diameter. The pine has this different, maybe different than other trees. It is relatively this. It's even in in uh, diameter, in the thickness of the tr the trunk. Um, I, you know, when I observed the, the real pine yes, yesterday, um, I realized, you know, the, the branches, if you add it up, it's uh, more than the trunk. So they, they're actually quite thick. Let me, let me do this. Um, where's my mustard seed? Oh, here. Okay. 
this branch almost like the same width of uh, the uh, uh, main main trunk. This notice that little um, hesitation points and the push pressing. You know this is pressing angular ten like that. Nail head, stroke, lift. Okay, here we have first a branch to appear. Just kick out and then uh, start from the top again, pull, pull, and then go down a little bit. Another branch like that, quite thick. It goes up a little like a curve here and uh, still outlined. So don't worry about that little conjunction trick here. Because I have general design, so I can focus on the detail without worrying too much about composition. We already solved it with the underpainting we did, right? Okay, here is the uh, the turning point to into tricks. So start from now on. I just do it in one stroke, one one without outline. And there's some, there's still some, but uh, let me just make it simple so it's not going to outline. Remember not to make uh, branches from the same point, make three from the same uh, point, right? You can make uh, something like that, overlapping. Okay. And uh, this one make a card cr cross in front of the main trunk. So this is very characteristic of uh, dragging, uh, hanging branches. So just drag down. Yesterday, I, when I see this in life, I have a, um, it's a, like a proven of this ancient wisdom, you know, they have this hanging branches in the real tree. But here, here's the, the turning point of the, uh, let me make a stuff there, you can even, Make a little branch, maybe. Okay, so goes up, goes down, goes up. And it's okay to do a lot of tricks because it, it would be um, helpful to to have this kind of bone structure under under the um, uh, needles. If you do it without these tricks, it will look. Um, you know, weird. Just the, if the pine needles directly grow from the trunk, you can imagine it's not very natural. So that's my branches. First branch, let me continue the, the, the trunk. So left side, again, I start from the second uh, major uh, knob, knot not hold. Uh, there's some kind of voice. I like that. It's almost like a highlight. Uh, so the light comes from the left so using Western um, interpretation. So I make this part really dark, shady. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Here is another branch. I forgot. Uh, yeah, you have to leave. Remember, you have to leave the place where the branch comes out. So I have to change a little bit, just this one goes behind. It should be a little lighter. The ink should be lighter behind. So it's too, too dark. And let me just drag it all the way there. And we can make it into this one. So what? 
you can you can redefine it, you know. Okay, let's make a little. I just look at the shape, like the negative shape of this, uh, um, the white uh, unpainted, like this shape, this shape, I try to divide. So they're not even, they are not uh, the same. Okay. Now um, this uh, this knob, I, I make it just smaller, and it turns like that. Okay, uh, goes down to the this part. And here's the branch. I think it's a little too sudden, but uh, it's okay. Let me make another branch here. So that's, a, that's a dry branch. It's very characteristic of a pine. And uh, oh, actually, here's another hole I missed. Okay, let me just make that up. A dry branch, maybe hit by thunder, bef you know, before something like that. Outline, and then. Turning to single line. It goes back first and then goes forward. It's Tai Chi movement. Okay. I think uh, I, although I have the plane, but uh, my space is out on the top. So I didn't really follow this. <laughs> Let me see. We can still make that complete. That's good. Okay, let's try. I tend to do the crown too big, but uh, it's okay. And uh, these are quite flat, so it's okay to um, complete the crown. The pine crown is very flat, almost like a Met where you can sit in for meditation. So there's a, there are names for many um, trees in the Yellow Mountain. One of them is called the uh, meditation mat. <laughs> Pu Tuan. I don't know how exactly that translation. The the mat uh, mat uh, like a flat as uh, the meditation place, and then uh, a painter like Shi Tao, I think. He did a monk sitting on top of the that tree. Okay. Okay. That's my my branches. Now I can do the uh, bark. Let me just wash it. Just add water and then uh, soak it. I mean, um, blot it. In, in paper towel, so I get lighter and I can test it dry and light, right? I can add a little back. Okay. Just add this uh, 
you don't have to really think about it. Just go with your your, your um, uh, second, I mean your subconscious. Just let your hand, because it's so loose, it's dry. You, you know, just remember the the placement of this, uh, not in the middle, along the, the side, but sometimes uh, more on the left, some more on the right. Um, you can also do in the middle. I think yeah, you can see there's line in the in the uh, uh, this shady part. It would be no line under this so like shady part, and then uh, there are some. Uh, Changes. This part maybe is the shady. You can you can use a little darker the brick the light if you want to, any changes and just dot a little bit to suggest the bark on the the branches. See this is uh, how much you need. This could be a little darker. Okay, let me finish the lower part. This is split split. Um, at the bottom, and then uh, into two kind of. I just do a suggestion of the hole. Of there's a shade um, like that. Let me just make it simple as so that. If you don't have room for all the, you know, uh, the same as the the. Master copy. You don't have to copy one one stroke, uh, stroke to stroke. So just you can push the, the brush to get the roughness. See this? You can just do something like a um, waving and along the uh, contour. Dry brush. It's, it's, uh, what you need to see this. Uh, okay. The next is the fun part. Let's do the needles. Uh, we just do one shade. One is enough. You know, you can, I think in Southern, Southern Song Dynasty, they just do mostly just one layer. Uh, you can have different pines in different distance, you know, like light ones behind uh, but with this one this uh, the same tree they just do it in one tone it's fine we just use dark leaf okay this i think is the the one we studied before let me just uh i i would start it i will start from some part it's not important you know some some more uh, important parts some Something like here, you can you can have it to dance. You can have more, you know, like here. I I think I my sample is a little twisted, so I, I can move a little bit my reference under it. Okay, let me just do the nail heads. We three three, and then do another group and cluster overlapping half another. Okay, when I feel comfortable, I will just go to the uh, place where I need to show off. I purposely make it uh, small, but you can, you can do, just keep it consistent, I think. In landscape, it's uh, relatively small in flower and the birds. You do life size. T drop, T drop shape in the on the lower uh, right, right. Okay. Is you kind of stop at the same point. Overlap half. There is branch I missed, so there's no support. Like, so I have to draw this. 
kind of goes behind. Oops. It's just kind of behind. Okay, let's do this one. And this, this actually is a very representational, a very typical of uh, Chinese landscape painting. You have this kind of formula uh, with the, in modern computer language, they call it fractal elements. And you just kind of repeat uh, randomly, not, not uh, symmetrically um, like patterns. But they are kind of like a pattern, but not organized as a, uh, a, a cloth pattern, a fabric pattern, you know. So this is called fractal design elements. They, they have this uh, first um, applied in the Chinese classical landscape. So you can, you can record a pine tree with just a, a few pixels of you know, the same group to just repeat uh, according to some uh, mass, mass fractal design formula. They call this a crisis or turbulence. I forgot. You have to make some in some some sudden interference of uh, the uh, continued pattern, so you don't really develop it along one single uh, horizontal line, something like that. that we talked about. <clears throat> so um, diagonal is is help. It, it's very helpful to go. So just put on top of, of that group. And look at the, the shape, the outer shape of the um, group to make it look like a covering clouds above the tree, like a floating above the tree. So the brush I'm using is the uh, red whisker or just whisker landscape brush. It's, it's very sharp, very pointed and uh, stiff. Good to do the whole tree with it. You can do the rock also. It's designed for this kind of landscape painting. <laughs> Let's say if you use a, a small whistle brush for this, you can still do it. It just needs to practice a little more because it's much softer. It might be hard to keep it straight, I think. But you can do it. You can, you can certainly do it. This one is much easier. The whisker landscape, rat whisker landscape. We don't kill the rat, that's why I take that out. Uh, it's not really that. It's uh, probably a uh, mix of uh, artificial hair these days, you know, these, and some rabbit whisker, or ra rabbit hair, certain part of the, the rabbit hair, stiff hair. So I, I, I sometimes, uh, like here, you know, you leave some, uh, uh, and um, some bare branches, dead, dead branches. Sometimes, uh, yeah, you need to show the branch, the tricks under it. Here is a, a good example of that, just like that. It's characteristic of a 
pine, all the pine trees. Right. And uh, you can certainly improve if you feel, you know, it's your painting, so you don't have to copy exactly like uh, the master. Master is like a skeleton, uh, just like the one we did underneath it. You know, the, the it's a general guideline, like a stroke guide. You need to, you can go out, out you go outside of the stroke guide or uh, short, cut it short. Okay, there's sometimes, you know, their perspective changes. You can do just half of it. You don't have to complete if you don't have room. So I just do like a half here. I see that on the master copy there. And uh, some part may be hidden behind. So you, you, can, you only see half of it. That's okay. But relatively um, the same size and the same form, same style type. Don't mix different size. Don't vary the size. Don't think about foreshortening uh, or distant you know, uh, distortions. Just like a two dimensional design. But the arrangement is certainly very organic. So it's not, not uh, even or symmetrical. Okay, so this is in front of the trunk. But because this is translucency of the pine, that's, that makes the pine tree unique. Uh, you can see through it, yeah. That's, that's very um, different than other trees. That's why we do this. If you do the blotting thing, like the one, you know, uh, it, it's, it's not uh, elegant. As, uh, uh, if you read the, the book text, it will show you the pine looks like a, a you know, like dragon or some, uh, something you, you make people all, uh, but not uh, feel to, you know, respect, not, not to feel uh, like, a, like a gentleman. interesting um, mind image uh, of pine. Because when I draw the pine yesterday at um, neighbor, neighborhood street, I remembered a pine I always passing um, on my way to primary school in my hometown Nanjing. It's a linked uh, pine, very old, only a few branches left on top maybe hundreds of years old. Uh, I think when I got high school they, or college, uh, they cut it off and the, when they uh, cut all the, the uh, old trees to, to broaden the way for cars or buses, you know. So uh, that, that tree was gone, but it's always in my memory. I think when I, yeah, when I teach another plein air uh, painting class uh, on pine, I ask people, assign people to study pines in your neighborhood or just uh, from your memory where you have lived. If there's pine that you can remember, that would help you to kind of relate the feeling of that to your painting. So uh, if pine has a very nostalgia, it's, it lives long, it's a symbol of longevity. Uh, you know, five years, uh, some pines I've seen 5,000 years old in uh, the big pine or the Briscone pine, I think it's called what it's called, uh, National Forest in North uh, East uh, California. We have the oldest pine in the world. <laughs> and think about it, this 5,000 years ago. That's the oldest plant um, on the planet. So think about that. Make it old, make it uh, like a, uh, remember how to write this character behind me? Uh, this is a song uh, composed of uh, a tree radical and a grandpa. 
<laughs> grandpa, grand, yeah, Gong Gong. It's five years old. Okay, that's about it. Um, okay, one more group here. I don't count the numbers. I see um, if I missed any shape in the composition. You know, I, I, I changed a little bit, so I, maybe I need to make up a little bit here and there uh, to con connect the, the chi. But I tend to over overwork. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just make this group into a, a major ball, like a kind of in front and the back. I can wrap in the, the the whole uh, tree, make it uh, with steps. That's uh, some you know behind, like here, some in front. That's uh, that's the idea. Um, you can color it with a little bit, uh, you know, brown on the uh, on the. Only we only see one part of the tree. Thank you. Okay. Henry. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. Henry, I have a question. On your page fifteen, you got a bunch of different style of tree leaves. Um, oh, the tree leaves. One, okay. you're picking one of those. Uh, what's the occasion we use other leaves? Are they for pine or are they for something else? Yeah, these are, uh, let me, uh, yeah, I think it, it has the, uh, okay, a uh, good question. Uh, in Chinese uh, painting, the, the plants and the uh, uh, trees are not identified uh, botanically or uh, with, uh, you know, the, the scientifically. Uh, we we, grew, we uh, categorize them uh, based on the shape, so uh, the uh, the um, the last group is called I think uh, I I thought it was a chrysanthemum. There, there on one of the page there's a chrysanthemum, like a little chrysanthemum. If you paint it small, it could be other uh, plant, other kind of trees. If you paint like a um, as big as the pine needles, it will become pine. So that's an example. And on those, uh, uh, you know, like uh, downward horizontal, it could be anything. The horizontal, the horizontal dots, um, actually used as a. Uh, um, if you remember last time we did the pine, uh, the distant mountain, right? So the distant mountain, use you only use horizontal. There's no branch, no even uh, just the one trunk, maybe. That's for the distant, distant uh, pine, right? And then we have this, uh, um, I don't see it here. On the middle ground, you will see this kind of uh, pine. You can still see pretty much, you know, the, the trunk. Same, same like uh, like we do here, and then um, you will see. Let's just finish this first, and then you do some uh, some branches like that. It could be a uh, not not really branch, but a, a combination of. And then you can suggest the horizontal dots as as pines, but just adding a little, little uh, dots on top or just over it, in the middle of it. Uh, that's a uh, way to summarize, to uh, abbreviate the middle ground pine. That's, that's middle ground. This is a, uh, like a, the foreground, middle ground and the uh, distant ground. Does that make sense? So it more has to do with uh, 
a general generalization pattern, uh, like a, uh, it could be applied on different uh, plants, like uh, the the goods, the, the three dots or the uh, four dots uh, are the bushes, you know, we, we, uh, it stands for this kind of a tree leaves, like a, a three or four, you know, and then you can do it in, in dot instead of, uh, this is spontaneous and this is more, uh, you can outline it. Just like we we can we can do in bonus style on, on times, so this page mostly are bonus a direct approach. So you you just do four dots in, instead of four um, little pattern uh, little circle outlined leaves, or you can combine them if you like. So this this is a, another a bush kind of tree. We call it. Um, like I said in yesterday's uh, introduction, uh, we call pine, pine trees or willow, willow trees. There are some other um, identified for trees like uh, uh, tone or some, some kind. And besides those four or five maybe uh, uh, kind of identifiable trees, we, we call the other trees just other trees, zasu or variable, vari various trees. That means um, we you don't have to identify them. Just bushes, brushes, you know, that kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you don't have to. You don't have to identify each uh, style of dots or uh, pattern with a, 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 a certain kind of. But you know it's very important to match the uh, the style of uh, the tree with the uh, <clears throat> style of uh, rock. So pine usually, like this kind of pine, goes with uh, X cut, X cut strokes. Remember this. Yeah, that's Mayuan's uh, uh, contribution to this kind of painting. I think Li Tang also does uh, this kind of pine, but, but he got more uh, this kind of uh, jacked, squarish turns. So th this this kind of pine, this kind of pine, the squarish goes with the squarish angular uh, stones, granite maybe, not the earthen kind of uh, uh, this uh, parallel wrinkle, uh, earthen, earthen hills, right? This, this would be good, good for median, the, the um, horizontal dots, me dots, Rice dots, whatever you call it, that's that's the uh, goes with uh, this kind of uh, fiber or uh, texture called uh, hemp. Hemp, yeah. So th uh, there's some uh, general uh, style guide, style types. So th that's why on on the book, uh, the teaching book, uh, Master Seed. It will show you whose style is that. And if you pick his uh, pine, you usually go with his uh, rock, Mayans. Yeah. It will show, it will talk about this kind of information, information on the mustard. Um, I'm not going to color it, but if you like, you can use very light uh, amber and then some uh, uh, indigo on the on the on the tree uh, on the uh, leaves, yeah. Let's see. Do we have time? Oh, we have ten minutes. That's good. Let me finish this by coloring it. <laughs> so we got we got some amber from last time. Here, you can add a little bit indigo to mute it or a little ink. 
Okay, so just very, very light. Uh, remember the, the, the uh, highlights in the middle, leave it wh white. And then uh, around the, the hole, the note, not hole, right? Leave it, yeah, leave it white. Just leave a lot of white, basically. You, 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 you draw, uh, you, you paint, not to be paint, you write it, you write it in, you, you stroke it in. You can use side brush stroke, or you can just use the same kind of stroke you did uh, with uh, the, the, uh, the branches or the, the trunk. Okay, I just go through some of the branches also. Just, uh, you, you don't have to, you know, uh, do it like a fill in a little by little, just uh, highlight it, highlight, reinstate or highlight it, yeah. Just just like the same kind of stroke. Don't use, light, uh, don't use water, many of you, tend to use too much wash. In classical landscape, they, I'd say on the silk, they don't wash wet in wet. Um, it's, it's pretty dry, basically. Okay, so um, maybe a little bit on the, on the rock also. Anyway, <clears throat> you can then add the cool colors. Um, let me get some. the indigo, indigo from the chip I got. So just kind of, because uh, this is kind of dark in the beginning. I just dot the center part and then before it gets dry, I, I spread it out with the water. You can also dampen it and wash uh, in, in uh, wet and, and wet, but I, I think it's not intense, it's dry, wet on dry. So I, I'll just So when the brush gets dry, you add water and get it lighter. Basically, um, try to uh, avoid dark uh, around the uh, outers. Edge. So I just dot the center part and then I kind of smear it. You can smear it from the center or you can use a little uh, water to, you can use a clean brush maybe, I, let me see which one works. Um, you can maybe just add some water to the, to soften the, mar the margin, the, the upper side and you can just and a little dry brush, dry brush on wet. So I will just add water or maybe a little bit, a little bit uh, indigo on the, with the water. Basically, yeah, very, very light just to, to smear the, the, the outer side. Okay, I got some ink. It should just clean. This is a uh, semi-sized paper. You can use size of the paper. Then you can use uh, two brush you know, just clean brush to spread it, just like you do with gradation or uh, that kind of sh uh, shading or gradation, yeah. It's like a gradation. So some clean brush to spread it. And you can, you don't have to paint all the way uh, bigger than the, just, you know, you can leave some uh, sticking out, some, some needles sticking out into white paper not paint uh, the color too large. So, it, it, you know, like a, definitely not too large. It could be smaller, okay? Could be smaller, not too large. Uh, that's my, my advice. You can try, uh, if you do large, you just make it thinner, very thin into clouds and mist, maybe. That, that's about it. And, uh, oops, got some dirt there. Okay. 
yeah, they use a lot of uh, wash in later development. You can just uh, do a little bit of contour and then more rely on wash, you know, contemporary artists also do that. Um, nothing wrong with that, just to make sure the ink is the bone, the, the basic element of uh, the painting. Your color should always be secondary uh, in complement to the ink, not to exist the ink. I use a little bit ink um, to shade, maybe, you know, enhance the, the whole of the... Again, you know, I like the feel of a dummy or so, uh, fluffy um, kind of feel, not too slick, too smooth, like a, um, the, you know, too, too uh, how to say? Yeah, something too too smooth is not good. So try to make it the painting more uh, rough, and not not coarse, uh, not rough like a drafty, but uh, uh, sometimes you know you can uh, spray a little water, just like a little uh, drops of water, but uh, so it make the line fuzzy. <laughs> when you draw this is this is the same idea you know I got when I paint hesitation there some uh, uh, down downy down like a feather feathery feather, feathery effect on on the on the uh, lines that's 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 good uh, or dry brush basically dry brush yeah wet uh, or dry to create that kind of feel. Uh, all right, so this is just an illustration of uh, the pines, and I, I hope, nice. yes, questions? Mm, wait a minute, so, yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the branches, at the end of the, the, the pine needles, uh -huh. um, I learned that, or no, so I've seen that they usually have little twigs, but in the traditional uh, tree that you're teaching, the the artist did not put these little twigs at the end of each branch. Uh, I, okay, not on each branch, not sticking yes. out on each branch. I, I, yeah, uh, so that's. Uh, uh, I think that's true. We only have some like this dead ones here, here, here. Yeah, but not that. not after the not after the pine needle, not like that. Oh, you mean like stand like right on top of that? Would I don't be... see. I I don't see your because it's on the top. Can you can you bring? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I that's... yeah. I I don't have any uh, dead branches on there, but you can have. Okay. It's not. Uh, it's not, uh, um, what do you say? Maybe not very natural to, to do the-, the uh, Okay, okay. Yeah, if you, yeah, I, I, I try to hide that kind of a tip. Okay. Like, like that kind of tip. I, I do yeah, it's pretty kind of, like that. Yeah, yeah. Really like I think it's more natural to have some dead, dead branches on, on the top, like you see in real, uh, on real, real tree on top of that. Usually they have mm -hmm. the old tree. Usually have bare head, just like a man's head, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bold. Very good. Bold, yeah. Maybe quick question: yeah. Is amber color the same as uh uh 土石? What's that? 土, 土石. 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 Uh, we, we, can you spell it? Uh, I don't know how to spell it, but I mean, is it the same as uh, amber? Uh, amber is English, Chinese is zhe yes. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, zhe, zhe, it's a... Uh, 
，这折怎么写 ？Let me, uh, when we can type it, let me just type. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah she got Henry, it. Isn't it umber, not amber? Amber. Amber. Um. With a U. Um, Amber, thank you for correcting my pronunciation. No, it Amber. was not you, it was um, the other person. Amber, Amber, Amber. Not a, a U, U, U M B E R, right? Amber. Raw Amber, Amber, uh, burnt Amber. This is a raw am Amber, Amber. Amber is like a, a soil. Um, you can you can get uh, from uh, the, the the yellow soil, 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 right? Yeah. Okay. Any any other comments and uh, request you may have? You can you can add a second to wash. I mean, start just that, just you know, another essence. Uh, if one is not enough, it not try to finish in one step. So you you see like an orchestra of uh, uh, elements, uh, lines, wash, and uh, uh, shading or shaping, whatever mm -hmm. we call this uh, shading uh, in, in on stone. This is a bark shape, bark uh, shaping, or wrinkle wrinkles. So um, you can always break, light break, dark, dark break, light. You can always uh, uh, go back. And usually it's a good idea to wear it dry. So you will dry lighter, and then you go back to highlight a little more. Don't, don't paint too dark. Yeah, yeah I think students tend to use, uh, over, you know, use color on, that, on Chinese painting because uh, they think it's, uh, it's it's kind of cool to paint. Actually, um, just need a little bit pure color, you know, on the um, important part maybe. But it will actually to make this kind of eye, we call it focal point eye, because to stand out more. That's the point. So just, just don't overshadow the unpainted part. Just don't, yeah, don't overdo it basically. Uh, I have another question. Uh -huh. I, I like the what you said in Chinese when you leave uh, the traditional painting, the, this artist who did the corner painting uh -huh. and, the un, and the unpainted part was called uh, what, I don't know in Chinese, pregnant but void. Pregnant, pregnant void. void. It's, this uh, is, such, yeah, this it's, is such a good expression. So it means it has something alive in it, no? Yeah, something uh, alive, yes. Pregnant void. That's a French translation, I think, maybe of a, uh, the, the, we just use void, traditionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, in French we say vide, we say void as well. Oh, okay. Pregnant void is uh, um, maybe a psychological uh, mm -hmm. term. Um, I think it also has to do with the uh, another concept I talked about, uh, you know, the, the, the suggested uh, whole, wholeness, uh, gestalt, yeah, uh, in Germany, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that, that kind of uh, uh, mind, uh, the, the, that our brain um, tends to complete the void, <laughs> you understand? And is that, you, that expression Pregnant void, is it used as well in calligraphy when the spacing between? Oh, yeah. Uh, calligraphy, we call that uh, negative space. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, calligraphy, the rule is, is, a, is a little different. In calligraphy, the pregnant uh, void, I mean, the void, um, the negative space should be all even. So, um, you know, if you write any character, and this kind of, uh, uh, of course, if you if you draw, you know, this 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 all even, right? But if you look at, you know, some um, some characters, you may have a partial uh, 
So this space here is equal to here and here. Oh. Uh, here. So that's that's uh, we yeah that's very important. So there, you know, when you when you draw two lines like that, we we look at this. This is more important, and you can be free to have. Uh, yeah, that. But this must be equal. So let's draw something like that. Oh, the gate. This is the gate, and then th this space should be all equal. But not here. This is this is okay. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that that's the idea. And then uh, there's a, always a dominant uh, stroke uh, in in each character. It could be the, the this character. Let's say um, so. But when you have two, you have to surrender one. Uh, so you don't have. You, you, yeah, you have to just keep one with this uh, fully uh, stretch. Uh, and it has the dominant force. Anyway, that's a different, you should learn from uh, the calligraphy, calligraphy class and maybe ask mm -hmm. Victoria to, to elaborate on that. The major stroke thing. And uh, effective uh, space um, is the, the, the um, spacing between strokes. <coughs> Space yeah, between two strokes. So uh, actually, here we, 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 we can see how it works. And you, you should always keep an eye on the, on the negative shape of this, uh, this. When you draw two lines, you can go, you know, you, you always, maybe you should do this, just do section by section. So you, you don't, you, you, you don't uh, lose that. That's uh, very common if a student. Uh, try to draw in one stroke, they will go like that, uh, and suddenly go, you know, so, so you just go off to the the uh, the the, uh, the the space, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, you, yeah. What do you you can correct that by doing something like that. It don't have to be the same um, same lens. It could be you can start from uh, just like a reference uh, here, you know. And then you, you you take that as a reference and just go further and take this as a reference. That that's my way to do that. To control the the diameter. Diameter, right? The space between the two. So you you can you can do just free, right? Now you you're not free. You have to worry about that, right? You understand? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, um, so your second stroke always um, has to do with the first one. The the first one produce the the second and the third and the fourth, etc., etc. <coughs> your assignment will be. Uh, uh, complete this painting if you didn't, uh, and then um, you can copy Ma Yuan's paintings. Maybe I, I, I can share some of the, uh, the reference I, I showed you earlier can be, um, and if you search Ma Yuan, I think you, you can find a lot. Uh, also, you can copy this academic, uh, non-academic, amateur style, academic, uh, not I can how to say, scholar amateur style just you know see the difference and I, i'll post my my study of that i didn't have time to show you <clears throat> but you can see the difference is um it's a little more free the groups the shape uh, varies a little more uh, instead of the, the regular shape i i think they, they tend to do um more freely i think it could be something like like that. Just more variable, and you can add mm -hmm. most you know more like that. <laughs> but if I teach you this, um, you will soon make a lot all kinds of mistakes. So you will <laughs> not get the rule. That's why where they break the rule, they go with this feeling. 
and you know they can stretch it like that they just i just feel that it 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 just um more give me a, a movement you know maybe a dance or just expressive i try to express my happiness maybe or sorrow or whatever you want to express that, so you can you can stretch it you can twist you can um it distort it you can distort it that's that's the um difference and we 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 should stay with this this kind of basic you can see they break the rule but uh, not not deviate um that far from the rule right so you can it might be a different um is it like a different perspective uh another thing i noticed the uh, is that they use very thin lines so you can use a very fine line so it shows the the uh, bone more uh, it 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 is it, it separates more from the uh, trunk and the branches uh i i really like i, I just noticed this uh this uh um style i, I really love it you can see uh, you don't have to paint on top of it. You can paint anywhere and right in the middle of the branch is still, um, if you do that with the thick, um, thicker strokes, it would destroy the branch, but not, not here. You can see that, right? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, amateur style painting the emphasis on the bone, not the, and this needle also very bony, very sharp. So you use this contrast is really nice. Try this. I I I'll, I'll post this because this will take a lot of time. It's very meditative. I really enjoy it. And you can see how enjoyable I did. I did mm. three complete. I had uh, some more uh, incomplete. Mm -hmm. So um, these are variables from the. Uh, I try to you know copy uh, this this two two pine, double pine. A pair of pine, whatever you call it. Can, um, can you send us this the, your work? Yeah, I'll, I'll send this work. But you should study the basics. Then you uh, yeah. you you try to copy this, and we'll uh, see what you do um, next time. Uh, to uh, can I, may I ask you a last question? Sure. Uh, maybe I missed that in the classes before because I missed the class. Uh, you mentioned a much amateur student amateur style amateur uh, uh actually is there is there a does that really does that running. mean that students or does it mean no, they are else? scholars they're scholar amateur it's Sorry. a term translated into english uh, in various terms okay the same um same um same chinese word it's a uh, uh, let me write this here. This all translates from this uh, this Chinese name. They call themselves Wen Ren Hua. Wen Ren means a cultured man, educated man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wen means a pattern, a cultural, cultural. <coughs> Wenren means uh, literati, literatus, yeah, the singular yeah. form. So Wenrenhua means literati paintings or literatus painting. I mm -hmm. think if you uh, go uh, with back to the lecture by uh, James Cahill last week, um, I have a link there. It, it talks about that. But he has. Uh, uh, a viewpoint against them. And he thinks the paintings lack skill, just uh, vulgar, you know, they're not nothing good. To, uh, it's just like one of us. Uh, if you look at the Su Shi, um, his painting is uh, sold for uh, two billion um, Hong Kong or four billion Hong Kong or uh, 50 million US and set a, a record uh, two years ago. It's, if I if I show it among our students, it looks like student painting, right? But uh, it is the theory, the idea behind it breaks the, it opens the new um, 
era, you know, that's why it's so important. It's called a revolutionary. Um, let me, do you remember that uh, old tree with a ugly, uh, a strange rock? I call it ugly, ugly rock. Uh, let me see. I think it's a landscape lesson. Yeah, classic. Um, yeah, that's the. Okay, let me see this. <clears throat> Rocks. Okay, let me see. Um, yeah, I can't find it anymore. It's, anyway, you, if you go back to the lesson four, um, and uh, I, the, there's a uh, link to the action site uh, showing the record of the action and with some. Uh, I, I quote it in, in my uh, class note, uh, what's the significance of that penny? Why it was so much in the history of uh, Chinese art? Yeah. It's similar to this uh, painting uh, of Zhao, Zhao Mengfu. He, he just the follower of that trend. He's a leading scholar, uh, amateur painter in the Yuan court. And has, uh, from that, from this time on, you can see on you know, the skeleton of the, the painting, they don't have to do any washes. That's why I think, you know, if you want to get this spirit, it, it just try not to use color and washes, just do it with calligraphy. So you look more um, scholar, educated, not artisans. They call the, the other school artisan school. They are court painters, professionals. Oh, this is amateur amazing. style, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the court style. But this is actually the bridge between the literati and the um, the northern zone court school. This is southern zone, remember. And this gave rise to the Zen Buddhism, the Zen painting by Japanese uh, painters. You know, see, they 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 use big brush and just do it uh, more um, loosely than this. But this one's still very um rule you know painted with rules every, every stroke uh, is binding the rule you know with the uh, x card strokes that kind of thing uh, but you can see the void yeah that's the the void is the uh, the trend you know the but in, in literary painting they you see the, the the remote mountains like that they just the uh, outlines Without, you know, like this shading scene. So, yeah, this is the, the a corner, a corner landscape. And a corner, see this remote mountain become just the, uh, like that. Without the monumental mountains occupy the whole, yeah, another, just lower part, lower half of painting diagonal half or lower half or upper half. So this is a, a southern, southern school. Yeah, this is the town. Here's, here's the middle uh, transitional figure between north and south. He, he lifts through the, the turn, I think. He, that's his uh, monumental painting among the three peaks. But this one can still, it's still, uh, you, it starts to see the close up view, not the distant view of uh, the whole mountain. Start to get a uh, personal. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks for. Henry, one more question, sure. if I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me a minute, because we got off of what I was thinking by doing the pictures. Um, I don't know. I may have to send you an email if I can't remember it. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, you can post it to the discussion group um, so everybody can uh, see the answers. Okay. The question. Yeah. Okay. Um, You're using the Stonebridge paper for for uh, your. 
Yeah, that kind of uh, paper, it's a uh, yeah, semi size, right? Okay, right. thank you. You can also use whatever paper. See, I use the Japanese paper preparing this class. Uh, so this is a Japanese paper. Uh, you can use the back side actually, of course, a little better maybe. Uh, so this is my notes for for the class. I can send you them maybe. Thank you. I'll take some pictures of this and uh, email you or or post it to the discussion, and you can uh, follow up on on that if you have more questions. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.